Now, this might come as a shock to some. Police in Pakistan's Peshawar have kept a thousand coffins ready ahead of the polls. Yes, you heard that right. A thousand coffins as Pakistan votes. Take a look. Khudana khasta, if there is a big disaster, Khudana khasta, we have done this planning that we have done 1,000 coffins that we have done. Well, that is the grim reality of the elections in Pakistan. So what lies ahead for the country? Is the outcome already decided or is there a surprise or two in the bag? Well, to decode uh, those ponderables and much more, I'm joined now by British Pakistani writer and journalist Reham Khan joining us live from London. Reham, good evening once again. Thanks for being with us. So many people, including yourself, have called this the dirtiest and the most rigged election in Pakistan's history. But what is it about this uh, election that you think sets it apart from those in the past? Let's have you uh, break that down for us, keeping in mind what the Deputy uh, Police Commissioner of Peshawar has also said about those coffins. Yes, thank you, Aisha, and good evening. Well, I mean, what can I say? Um, if anyone was to take a wild guess where this uh, deputy commissioner was from, uh, it would have to be Peshawar and KP. And so I think that the PTI's uh, buffoonery is now uh, uh, filtering into the, the district management group as well. And this is an awful, I mean, it would be funny, but it's a very, very disturbing statement that the DC has made. And I can't imagine why he would go on record and say something like that instead of preventing and ensuring law in order he is arranging uh, or putting the final touches to arrangements for a thousand funerals uh, what does that say to anyone uh, of course it's not sending the right message to voters who uh, there, there seems to be a little bit of apathy and as you can see with the top trends on Twitter today that um, many fear that there will be a very low voter turnout and of course uh, what I'm particularly concerned about are uh, the youth as well as the women and we'll come to that a little bit later but for Peshawar as we've seen that this is um, uh, this is the city where we've seen the sad, tragic martyrdom of uh, Harun Bilor only a week ago. And uh, this kind of statement cannot be helpful. However, it gives you a little bit of a hint of the reality. So it is going to be uh, the dirtiest uh, elections on record. But I think what we fear is that it could well be the bloodiest uh, elections as well. And why I say that is because whichever way uh, the result goes, for example, if it is uh, the PMLN camp is looking very confident uh, today and I hear that the family has uh, moved to Dunga Gali and they're having a nice cup of tea and en enjoying uh, the fact that they will have a very clean victory in Punjab. Uh, but on the other hand, we have um, birds uh, sitting in the in, in the PND establishment saying that they are looking towards a uh, landslide victory for Imran. Uh, so it's it's. Uh, Either way, I mean, if, if the PMLN do not get the victory that they think that they deserve, then there will be some rioting and bloodshed. And I think that the feeling across Punjab is one of very high sentiments, high emotion. And, and for a statement like this coming from a DC is, is, is really quite sad. And I think he should, um, should have been advised before he went uh, on record and uh, made that statement. I hope that he's just said that um, in an effort to just um, um, be relevant and that it was just a moment of uh, um, premeditated stupidity. But I hope that it isn't a hint of what we can expect. Right. And, and I suppose with the violence in the run-up to the polls, uh, the, the questions about uh, security, not just for the candidates, but also the people attending these rallies does come up. Um, I want to ask you before we move on, uh, Reham, why you feel that this vote is significant despite the fact that some people are calling it rigged, some people are calling it uh, you know, an ugly fight between uh, the three main parties uh, that, that we're seeing play out. But this vote is still significant. It's 2018 and Pakistan is yet to have a prime minister who's been elected complete a full term. So the significance, I suppose, isn't lost on anyone. Absolutely, Aisha. And why I say it's significant is because it's make or break for us. And if you look at the number of uh, articles now coming out from the West, the US and the UK, of course, even Indian publications who have been writing about it. And uh, everyone is very worried about handing over the reins uh, to a character who doesn't seem stable enough. And this is not, you know, everybody can't be a bitter ex here. So uh, the, the, the thought generally is that it is looking like Punjab for the first time is going to see uh, an uprising. And when I say an uprising, 
resonating not only with the electorate, but also uh, uh, feeling a resentment for the first time in our history against the military establishment. And I think a lot of uh, people are very nervous who are sitting in the military and, 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 and in Pindi, and they want to now detach themselves from the process. And I was watching uh, one of the reports actually on Vion yesterday. It was also reported that the army, the ECP, has um, has uh, suggested that the uh, some of some of the uh, liberties that they were given earlier have now been withdrawn. So it looks like they don't want as much interference of of, of uh, the military during the uh, electoral process, and and that means that I think perhaps very late, but the army wants to detach themselves from this process. I say make or break because this could well be revolutionary. We saw how Nawaz Sharif made a very emotional statement from his prison cell yesterday today and this was broadcast across the nation and I'm looking at um, Punjab uh, uh, feeling quite strongly this time that they have to uh, join together the pro-democratic forces have to join together to uh, completely eliminate this supremacy of the military but you see it's a game of survival equally if you look at the military and if you look at the establishment it is a game of survival for them and I think maybe they're regretting the choice of the Ladla of the chosen one but it's too late in the game and they have no other option so if you if you think about the fact that it is uh, a game of survival for everyone I think that although we say that the ISI and the establishment uh, want to be detached, but maybe there is, there is um, an argument around to suggest that maybe they do not want to detach. And even if they're not involved in the process, they want to give the impression that they are very much the boss. And that perception is what is really disturbing. I speak to business, businesses uh, around Punjab, and even those who are seen to be affiliated with the PMLN are very, very scared. People who are tweeting, are very scared because they think that they will have some sort of personal um, uh, vendetta against them if Imran comes into power. And, and the fear is not of Imran, it's, it's the perception that the agencies are backing him. So it's, it's a very difficult uh, call. In fact, uh, one of my friends uh, called me a little bit earlier and uh, we were laughing about the fact that an astrologer called him up and asked what he would suggest. And uh, when we asked the astrologer what his, uh, what his uh, reading was, he said, well, I can't see anything this time. It looks very blurry. And I suppose I, I don't believe in astrology that much. And I think that it is a very blurry situation, uh, but it's, it's, it is very much a, a case of survival for everyone. It is survival for pro-democratic forces. It's survival for Imran. It's survival for Nawaz Sharif and his daughter. It's survival for Shabazz Sharif. It is certainly survival for the Pakistan People's Party, newly revived um, by young Bilawal in Punjab. And it is, above all, of the utmost importance, a survival game for the military establishment in Pakistan.